Hey everybody, it's Dina, and um, I bought myself a little gift, um, and it's it's not by any means a super new product, but um, I've just kind of been late to that party, I suppose, and um, these are just a little set of metallic watercolors, uh, the Kuretake, um starry colors so all of these are some kind of sort of metallic gold i mean there's a silver one and i'm curious to know how opaque that's going to be but i figured i'm just gonna just walk through using these a little bit today and some of this will be sped up for um everyone's sanity <laughs> um but I was, I've been doing these watercolor flowers for some time now, and the more of them I do, I wind up with images that, like these, which, um, like these, I don't find, um, they're not quite good enough as they are. They're, they're sort of almost there, but there's a problem somewhere with all of them. So I wanted to maybe use some of these metallics and just see if I can, you know, take them back over that kind of flawed uh, flawed state and see if I can push them back into um, a place where I really feel like they're resolved and like where, the, you know, if they're sort of a B squad images and I want to see if I can, I can push them into sort of an A squad place with the metallics. If it doesn't work, I don't really lose out. I don't think they're going to make them worse. I just think that they have the potential to maybe make them better images and more resolved. So that's what I'm going to play with today a little bit and just kind of test these out, play with them in my sketchbook. So, um, yeah, I'll spare you. Um, I'll spare you the, my struggling with the box here. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, um, I found one thing I don't like already, which is like, um, this box is insane. I had to kind of, um, you know, I had to open it like a dog going through the garbage. It's just um, the way that the flaps are tucked in is just really, they were kind of caught against themselves, so it's really hard to open. Not really a problem. I figured it's just a cardboard box, no big deal. But it's really the only, the only thing between these little, lovely little pans. I mean, I love this packaging on some levels, but that box is the only thing between these and disaster. And, you know, I'm not, not a huge fan of that because now this has to live somewhere, you know, kind of um, dedicated to it. So the packaging is pretty and stylish, but it's really, I don't think it's the most practical, um, especially because I can be a little on the disorganized and messy side as a lot of us are when we're honest about it. So um, I'll figure out some way to hold these. You know, I might just take like a little dedicated Ziploc or Sephora bag or something and just put these in there. But um, they're going to have to kind of, I'm going to have to figure out some kind of storage solution to this because I know myself and these are just going to go everywhere. That said, I like that these are, in theory at least, replaceable easily, and they're they're really nice flat pans. So, um, you know, I'm not necessarily they haven't necessarily lost me with that either. I'm I would be open to getting more of the Kuretake watercolors, and um, I'm just going to play a little bit. These have already been scanned and digitized, so I don't need to worry that I'm going to lose anything. And I'm just going to. Um, see how these perform. Treat them like I would any other paint. They're a little slow to wet, which is fine. It's interesting because it looks to me like um, some of these colors are a little slower to wet than others. So it's just kind of interesting. You know, the pigments are, they have different consistencies. Um, I don't necessarily think that that's a liability. It's just kind of, um, kind of, a, you know, it's just everything has its own properties. And even, 
even within the same company or I imagine sometimes across different lots if it's you know a less expensive paint and this is these are about 15 bucks which is nice um, you know it's not it's not um, throwaway cheap but it's also not prohibitive so um, so far I have to say I really really like these I like that um, there's transparency to some of them, you know, more transparency to some of them and less transparency to others. This is a beautiful color. Uh, it's champagne gold, so it's a very pale and very transparent gold. But I think that that is really fantastic for enhancing florals. So I think this is going to be a color I get a lot of usage out of. I don't know how it's showing up necessarily on, um, I don't know how it's showing up on camera, but I'm liking what I see right now from different angles. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a little bold here since these are scanned and I'm going to take the image that I care the least about on this page and just kind of um, see if adding that doesn't enhance it or you know push it a little further which is something i think i think it needs we'll just see how this um how this acts over when you place it over an existing layer of watercolor That's probably the best application for this color, actually. to play with the right amount of water for controlling um, the champagne gold but I think with enough practice it'll really that's just really pretty um, so I can see I can see getting a lot of mileage out of that now that probably won't scan super well but I don't know I could be wrong I might be premature saying that and I'm going to experiment with it but even if it doesn't scan well it seems to me like uh, it could be really nice if you do any handmade cards or just sort of quick illustrations like I have a set of watercolor cards and I may I may do a few hand painted ones and just you know offer those in my store and see if there's a lot of interest in that and um, you know another thing you could do is use this paint to enhance your prints right like offer a digital print and then um, use a little a few strokes of this on, on top to enhance that a little just add something that's sort of special and personal to that um, can be kind of nice So yeah, I really like the results I get with that. Maybe try another color. This red gold color is interesting. It's just the side of copper, very red. Um, you know, I think I think in the right context, you could push this into a copper uh, kind of to read as a copper metallic, which is really, um, you know, that's very of the moment. I think. From what I notice in floral design and just kind of drinking things in visually, I see a lot of copper metallics lately. Uh, I'd like that to be a little more bronze than it is, but it's not bad. I guess I'll try this silver color, which they're calling white gold because it's kind of the um, 
that's kind of the theme they're going with. It looks to me, on first blush, like it's a really transparent um, silver metallic. Let's see if I can dress this up a little. Yeah, it's very transparent. So that's something that I would handle differently. I would put that over, um, you know, I could put that over cool colored sketches, and I think that would be the best use for that color. Probably won't get as much mileage out of that just because I know my palette and it tends to be, tends to be a lot warmer. See what happens if I just work that into this foliage a little where it got too dark. Probably should use a smaller brush for this endeavor, but kind of too late to go back now. Here we go. It's kind of nice. That one's a bit more subtle. So yeah, I, I like what I see so far, and I'm gonna try to work this now into um into this page. This has been bugging me. Um, I really liked this image. Everything was cool and working fine. And then this just got really overworked. You know, we got to that point where it was pilling and I lifted and just, it, it just really was kind of not playing well with the rest of it. And I got it to the point now where I, I knocked it back and put it back in and you know, this is kind of make or break. I think this could, you know, this could still be salvaged or it could just continue to go wrong. And we'll just see what happens. I'm gonna use the one color I haven't used yet, which is this light gold. And it's kind of in between the champagne and um, the red. It's got sort of um, like a light but warm quality to it. So let's see, I think it's on the more opaque side. I'm just going to really uh, wet the palette and let it kind of um, become inky and then pull it up in that state. And work with a brush that's not too wet but is good and paint saturated. Let's see what I can see what I can salvage out of this situation and just kind of. place that suggestion of a few petals back into that image, into that shape. The sweet spot of like too much water versus not enough water and your brush starts to dry out with these is kind of, kind of elusive, I'm noticing. It's a little hard for me to pin down. So that's something that um, you'll notice as you work with these, I think. It's a little bit of a liability because too wet and you get transparency and too dry and it just kind of quits halfway through the stroke and you don't get these really nice lush lines that I want to try to reintroduce to this. Well, I don't know if I've saved it or botched it worse or what, um, which is fine. Like I said, it's not, I don't consider it a huge loss because I wasn't really pleased with where I was going anyway. Um, what I'm learning through using these is that um, they're nice, but for any kind of opacity on these more transparent colors, you use a lot of the paint up. So, um, you know, the that price is a decent price, but it's still, um, when you factor in how quickly I think I'm going to use some of this, it may it may not be, you know, it may not be the bargain that it appears on first blush. Um, I do like them. Um, I really like the results. Um, they're a little awkward to get used to, but that's not a problem. I don't mind that I'm going to have to play around with these and just kind of get a better bead on them. I guess I should I should see what happens if I use a smaller brush on some of this stuff. 
I just find that, um, and this could be a factor of my brushes. Um, Trakel nylon's a little bit stiff for watercolor. I like it. I like a little bit of stiffness for control, but it the belly doesn't hold a lot of water, so that might just be... See, I really love, I love the line quality you can get with this stuff a lot. It's really, it can be, it can be really quite gorgeous. Um, but, you know, it may, it, so the problem may be, might be more the, the choice of brush that I'm using with these rather than within the paint itself. Um, it's absolutely, I, it's absolutely a would recommend if this is something that you're interested in using. Um, I, I really like that they are transparent, that they do behave like a normal watercolor. A lot of, um, a lot of metallic paint, you just kind of, um, you know, it's, it comes on very strong. It's very, it's very metallic and it's very opaque. And that's something that, you know, they try to build into that. And, you know, you kind of want that as your, as your norm, but it's really nice to me. It's really nice that you can, you can, um, manipulate the opacity of these, you know, and, and make them less opaque very easily just by adding water to them, like a normal watercolor and just get a really wide range of um, of effects. You know, I almost kind of driven to try a little mixing experiment with this in, indeed. Give this a whirl and um, just let me use a disposable palette for this real quick and just um, see what happens if I combine a uh, little metallic with with my standard cotton and yes much as I suspected that's just beautiful oh my goodness that's wonderful so this is a cool thing um, you know I guess and this may be really obvious and I can't believe I missed it but what you can do is you can actually create a metallic color and you know the mica in these or whatever it is that causes them to be metallic just spreads out really beautifully within a color mixture so you can get oh my goodness that's just that's lovely so you can get this sort of sparkling uh, watercolor effect and just it, it spreads out beautifully and you can lay that into your work and that is really exciting now again that's particularly exciting if you add that on top of one of your digital prints um, I don't think that's going to scan exactly right I don't think that little sort of it's those gorgeous little champagne bubbles of color um, are going to read correctly digitally but that is something that I'm going to test before I before I commit to you know insisting that it can't possibly exist uh, effectively either. Um, my scanner surprises me constantly, so yeah, um, definitely I would recommend. I really enjoy using these, and I'm going to probably just turn off the audio and have myself a good time here and play with these some more. <laughs> 